Have you ever wondered how a fifth-generation fighter jet capable of challenging the most advanced Western models is built? Today, we're going to discover the interior of the Sukhoi Su-57, Russia's most modern fighter, a project that combines stealth materials, high-powered engines, and cutting-edge assembly technology. From the first steps on the assembly line to flight tests, we'll see what makes this aircraft a key element of Russian military strategy and why it's so important in the global competition for air dominance. On January 29, 2021, the Russian Ministry of Defense released previously unseen footage that captured the world's attention. It showed, for the first time, the serial construction process of the Sukhoi Su-57, Russia's fifth-generation fighter jet that aims to compete with Western models such as the F-22 Raptor and the F-35 Lightning II. These images provided an opportunity to observe key stages of assembly, aircraft preparation, and the rigorous checks before its first flight. The footage revealed several manufacturing stages, from the installation of structural components, the engine compartments, and the center section of the fuselage, to the complex network of hydraulic piping and fuel systems. Also shown were parts of the wing and assembled segments of the center fuselage, Although the video did not fully show how the engines, wings and cockpit were installed, it did provide an insight into a finished fuselage and the use of various composite materials that make up the final structure. After completing the basic construction phase, the Su-57 undergoes a series of technical tests. The aircraft's essential systems are checked, extremely precise measurements are taken, and each control surface is calibrated to ensure accurate flight maneuvers. This process includes testing of the landing gear and the in-flight refueling probe, systems that must function flawlessly before the aircraft can take off for its first takeoff. Then comes the special paint job, a critical step for a stealth aircraft. Unlike conventional fighters, the Su-57 receives a coating designed to absorb radar waves, which reduces its electromagnetic signature and makes it more difficult to detect by enemy radars. Even the radome, which protects the radar in the nose of the aircraft, is treated differently than the rest of the fuselage, as it must allow radar waves to pass through without affecting its operation. Once these stages are completed, the aircraft receives its final camouflage and the Russian Air Force insignia. Only after a final inspection and pre-flight check is the aircraft cleared for airborne dynamic testing, marking the beginning of its operational life. The most valuable aspect of the images released of the Su-57's construction was not only the opportunity to observe the assembly process in detail, but also to see how the production units had incorporated significant changes compared to the initial prototypes. During the early stages of the program, the first examples had received criticism related to the quality of the finish and the integration of some systems, but in the final version, many of these observations were addressed. One of the most obvious transformations can be seen in the surface of the fuselage and aerodynamic controls. While the prototypes displayed a rougher finish, with visible joints and exposed rivets, the current versions feature a much more uniform, polished and clean coating. This improvement is not just aesthetic. The aircraft's aerodynamics benefit from reducing irregularities in the airflow, and its stealthiness is also increased as smooth surfaces reflect fewer radar signals, making them harder to detect by enemy systems. Another key improvement is the way the engines are integrated within the fuselage. In the initial models, certain parts of the propellers were exposed, which increased the aircraft's thermal and radar signature. In the production version, however, the engines are completely covered by the structure, considerably reducing the footprint left on surveillance systems and improving its ability to operate in environments with advanced air defences. This adjustment brings it closer to the stealth standards that characterise fifth-generation fighters in the West. Added to this is the fuselage construction with a much higher percentage of composite materials. These offer a combination of structural strength and lightness that is difficult to achieve with traditional metals. Thanks to them, the Su-57 not only reduces its overall weight, allowing it to maneuver more agilely, but also optimizes its stealth characteristics, as composites absorb radar waves better compared to conventional alloys. Together, these improvements make the production Su-57 a clearly more refined and advanced aircraft than its early experimental versions. 
The leap in quality reflects the Russian industry's efforts to close the gap with its competitors and ensure that this aircraft can meet the demanding standards of modern combat aviation. The images released of the Su-57's construction process did not yet show the new Izdali Air 30 engines, but these are destined to become the definitive power plant for the Russian fifth-generation fighter. Although they were not part of the first production models, they had already passed experimental tests, and Russia had begun preparations for their serial production, initially planned for 2022 or 2023. The current engines, derived from those used on the Su-35, already allow the aircraft to reach and maintain sustained supersonic speeds, a key capability for modern combat. However, the Izdali A-30s represent a significant technological leap. They will offer greater power, more efficient fuel consumption and a longer service life. These improvements not only increase the Su-57's maneuverability and acceleration capabilities, but also extend its range, essential in long-range missions. A particularly relevant detail is the incorporation of three-dimensional thrust vectoring, which gives the aircraft superior agility and allows it to perform extreme maneuvers that would be impossible in conventional fighters. With this capability, the Su-57 can maintain an advantage in close combat, an arena in which maneuverability is crucial. In theory, with the Izdali A-30, the Su-57 will come closer to the performance of its Western competitors, such as the F-22 Raptor or the F-35 Lightning II, balancing the scales in terms of thrust, speed and operational flexibility. For Moscow, this evolution is crucial, as it ensures that the program not only meets the current needs of its Air Force, but also remains relevant in the technological race of the coming decades. A particularly interesting detail, although not explicitly shown in the video, is the application of augmented reality in the assembly process. Building a fighter of this type requires absolute precision. Every rivet, every hole, and every part must be positioned exactly where it belongs, as even the slightest deviation can affect flight performance. While the United States typically uses projectors and laser systems to mark assembly points on production lines, Russia has opted to use augmented reality glasses. The technicians who assembled the Su-57 used these devices to visualize directly on the aircraft structure where each component should go. This allows for faster work and in some cases even greater precision. The use of this technology is a clear example of the level of sophistication Russia is incorporating into its military programs, demonstrating that, although its industry is sometimes perceived as less advanced than that of the West, it is adopting modern manufacturing methods that place the Su-57 on par with other fifth-generation fighters. Although the Su-57 is already in service, its development continues unabated. One of the most promising additions is its integration with the S-70 Okotnik B heavy drone. This unmanned aerial vehicle is designed to operate in conjunction with the Su-57, carrying out high-risk missions in environments where the probability of being shot down is high. The Okotnik can penetrate heavily defended areas, attack strategic targets, and act as an extension of the Su-57's sensors. In other words, it functions as a loyal wing that multiplies the manned fighter's combat capability while protecting the pilot's life. This combination of manned and unmanned aircraft represents the future of military aviation, and Russia seeks to position itself at the forefront of this operational doctrine. Although the Su-57 has already been officially incorporated into the Russian arsenal, this fighter is not a closed product, but rather a platform designed for continuous improvement. Its development includes successive upgrades ranging from avionics and electronic warfare systems to armament and engines. In the electronic field, future versions are expected to integrate more powerful radars, multi-frequency sensors and advanced communications, allowing it to act not only as an air superiority fighter, but also as an air command center, capable of coordinating operations with other aircraft and ground units in a digitalized warfare environment. Regarding armament, the Su-57 will be able to employ hypersonic missiles and other next-generation weapons, many of them carried in internal compartments that preserve their stealth capabilities. These improvements seek to expand its long-range strike capability and increase its survivability against modern defenses. 
Regarding propulsion, the program is moving toward the incorporation of the ISDA LEA 30 engine, designed to offer greater thrust, lower fuel consumption, and the ability to maintain sustained supersonic flight without the need for afterburners. This capability will give it greater range and put it on par with its most advanced competitors. The goal is to ensure that the Su-57 can compete with fifth-generation fighters such as the F-22 Raptor or the F-35 Lightning II, and that it does not fall behind future sixth-generation projects already under development in the United States, Europe and China. The Su-57 should not be understood solely as a new Russian fighter jet. In fact, it represents a clear statement of strategic intent on the part of Moscow. With this project, Russia seeks to demonstrate that despite economic challenges and international sanctions, it still possesses the technological, industrial and scientific capacity to design and produce cutting-edge weapon systems capable of rivaling Western developments. Its importance goes far beyond the number of units manufactured in the short term. The essential message is, Russia can remain within the small group of countries capable of building fifth-generation fighters a field so far dominated by the United States and, to a lesser extent, China. The evolution of the Su-57 is not limited to the current models that have already been tested and delivered to the Russian Air Force. The program contemplates a continuous improvement process that includes the development of more powerful and efficient engines, the so-called Izdelia 30, designed specifically for this fighter, as well as integration with unmanned aircraft such as the S-70 Okotnik Heavy Drone, which will significantly expand its operational capabilities. At the same time, the aircraft is expected to receive constant updates to its avionics, electronic warfare systems, and the software that manages its sensors, thus ensuring that it remains competitive against Western fighters for decades to come. What is clear is that the Su-57 is destined to be a central player in modern military aviation. Although it is still unknown exactly how many units will be mass-produced or how quickly Russia will be able to incorporate them into its arsenal, it is a turning point in the global technological and military race. Its mere existence forces Western powers to consider a new factor in the air power equation.